Hi, and welcome to NOE. NOE supports over 30 different types of data sources, including native NoSQL, relational and data warehouses, file-based, as well as REST APIs. For this demonstration today, I'm going to show you our native Elasticsearch analytics and reporting capabilities. Now that I'm connected to my cluster, I'm going to build my first query. NOE retrieves all the available indexes to query, and I'm going to select the sending activity index, which contains re the results of an email marketing campaign. So the first thing I need to do is connect to my Elasticsearch cluster. I simply enter in the location of my cluster, a sysadmin login, I select the version that I want to use, and then I have a couple of other security options. I can select a SSH tunnel, or I can deploy an agent and with the agent, it is a hybrid deployment option, so that means that your data never leaves uh, your premise. So uh, with all of this entered, I just test my connection, and everything's great, and then I just save it, and I am ready to go. You'll notice as soon as I selected the index, we started writing out the JSON query. This is where the native piece really comes in. Noe auto-generates queries in the underlying database's native language. In this case, Elasticsearch is JSON. But if we were querying Mongo, we would write out MongoQL. Couchbase, we'd write out nickel queries. And MySQL, obviously, we would write out SQL, and so on. With native integration, there's no need to install any drivers or move your data out of Elasticsearch into a relational structure just for analytics. With a query interface, we cater to a couple of different skill sets. If you're proficient in JSON, simply click on our query editor, and you can type in your query here. If you're less confident with JSON, we also infer all of the data that's available in the index and we present it in a nice point and click interface. This particular index doesn't have any nested data, but if it were to have nested data, we would also break that out and display it here. Okay, so now I'm gonna select some fields for my query. So I'm gonna start off with my customer and then uh, let's do campaign name, message type, uh, number of clicks, uh, number of sent messages, and the date. So as you can see, it's created my JSON query here. And then I'm going to use uh, our Cloud9QL uh, language to help me augment some of the data here. So Cloud9QL is a SQLite syntax that uh, we have that sits on top of the queries. So they, all of the commands that are here will run post-query. It's sort of like your wingman to help augment um, your queries when, you know, sometimes the syntax uh, that's given by the underlying query language isn't particularly uh, strong, so it's, uh, it helps you add some additional functionality. So I'm just going to select everything here, and what I want to do is create a new field uh, called click-through rate. Um, so what that is is clicks divided by sent, um, and it's going to be percentage, so I'm going to just make that a percentage, and then I'm going to do it as click-through rate. And then I also want to change my date uh, format to be by week, so we have a function called uh, week, so I'm going to take that uh, oops, uh, date as week. So if I've done that correctly, I can preview my query. And you'll see here that it's uh, created a field called week, which is uh, taking the, the date field and just giving it the week that that date occurred in. And then we now have this new derived field called click through rate. So this is looking uh, pretty good. Uh, the only thing I want to add here is I want to add a the uh, state uh, information for my uh, customer because I want to do some geo uh, coding stuff a little bit later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join this query with uh, another query, um, but my state information is in a MySQL database. So I'm just going to connect to my MySQL database here and I'm going to create a new query. So here's my um, Elasticsearch query, and now I'm writing another query that is on MySQL, and I'm picking the customer table here. And you can see now that I'm writing out MySQL. So again, same type of uh, interaction I can have. I can either type SQL here directly, um, or I can just use our point-and-click interface. 
And the, uh, the only thing that's a little different here is I need to tell, uh, you need to tell us how to join these queries. So I'm going to do a simple inner join here. And on the left side is my Elasticsearch query. So I'm going to pick customer. And then on the right side is my MySQL query. And I'll pick customer here as well. And then that, that's my join criteria. And if I hit uh, preview again, you'll see now I've added the state. So unlike uh, some of the options that are available in XPAC like Kibana, um, we can uh, know we can query across disparate sources. So you can not only query your Elasticsearch database, but you could then bring data in from other sources. In this case, I brought data in from MySQL, but you can easily bring data in from uh, a Mongo database or a REST API or a combination of multiple different sources, Mongo and MySQL and REST API, for example. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on building data sets on the fly without having to first move and stage your data. Okay, so I'm happy with this, so I'm going to uh, give this a name. Um, so let's see, we'll call it campaign report. Um, and I'm going to save and I'm going to run that query. Okay, so now I'm ready to uh, actually start building my dashboard. So I'm gonna go over to the dashboard space and I'm gonna create a new dashboard um, called uh, campaign report. And we'll just create that. So I have an empty dashboard here. So now what do I, I do is I just simply go and I grab the, uh, the uh, widget that we just created, which is called campaign report, and I drag it onto my dashboard. And you can see that it's sort of trying to decide what type of visualization to provide, but I could go into settings and I can basically s select any type of visualization I want. We have 30 different types. So I'm just gonna put it into a simple data grid right now and, uh, and save that. So now I have it as a, as a data grid, and now I want to do some additional analytics. Um, so I'm going to build a couple of other uh, visualizations off of this original uh, data set. So I'm going to go into analyze mode. And what this lets you do, and this is also where business users can start to do some ad hoc reporting off of your data, is uh, you can do uh, additional calculations off of the original data set that you created. So. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to create a new report that's um, cus by customer, and I want to know uh, the number of sent messages, and I want that to be a sum, so I want the total number, and in fact, I'll change that to total sent, um, and I also want to know the clicks. Um, and we'll also make that a sum, and we'll make that a total clicks. Okay, and then I also want to group by week. So now I have a, a new set of data here. It's my got my customer, the total cents by week. Um, so I'm going to create a. a another visualization off of this, and I think I'll make this one maybe a stacked bar chart. And we're going to have customer, and we're going to do it by uh, total cents. And then, uh, so now I have a good sense of like what my actual activity was by customer over the period of time. And then I'm going to add an X, uh, sorry, a Y um, axis to this that is the clicks. And we'll just make that a line chart that will sit on top of uh, my original chart. So now I've got, you know, a two-dimensional chart here with information about each of the uh, campaigns by customer, the volume, and then the click rate or the clicks per campaign. So I'm going to save this as a new widget. And this is going to be, let's make this uh, campaign customer performance. And we'll just clone that to our dashboard. So now I have this new widget. Okay, so I've added this uh, widget to my dashboard. So now I want to do some additional analysis and I actually want to create a drill down uh, from this 
dashboard into another dashboard. So first I'm going to create the dashboard that I want to drill down into. So I'm going to go into um, the original widget that I had and I'm going to make a slight modification to it. I'm going to add a grouping by campaign name and I'll just change the name of this field to be a little bit better there. Um, and then I'm going to uh, go back up to my visualization. I think I'll still stick with a, with a stacked bar chart, um, but my grouping is a little bit different. I want to group by a campaign name now. Um, and I don't need my um, y-axis uh, line chart here. So I'll just get rid of that. And then I'm going to save this as a uh, new widget. And we'll just call that... Uh, campaign performance, you know, by week, um, and then we'll clone that. I'm not going to bother uh, adding it to my dashboard because I'm going to drill down into it. And what I'll do now is I'm going to add that, uh, that drill down. So if I click on drill down, uh, so now I'm ready to add the drill down. So uh, I'm going to drill down on the widget. So a widget is another visualization. So I'm going to just click widget, and then this is the drill down that I, uh, the widget that I want to drill down into. And I want it to uh, be enacted when somebody clicks on the customer uh, field. And then I need, just need to tell it what uh, filters to pass down to the next chart. So I want to filter by customer. Um, and then I also want to filter by week. So this is my primary chart and then this is my secondary chart that I'm drilling down into. Um, and then I will save that and close this and then if I click on one of these values here it'll drill down into this next chart and I can get some more detail. So to summarize what we did we connected to an Elasticsearch cluster uh, we created a query um, using native JSON uh, we, we connected that query to another query we joined it with uh, data from MySQL uh, to create a virtual data set that we then built a couple of visualizations off of including a drill down. Uh, there's other things that I haven't gotten into, which is includes you can uh, share the dashboard, share and embed them. Uh, we have alerting as well as machine learning as well on the platform. So to look at some of those more advanced features I, and to play around with the system itself, you can go to noe.com and sign up for a free 14-day trial. You can also uh, connect to us on chat and ask any questions you might have. Hope you found it useful and uh, look forward to seeing you online. Thanks. Bye.